life. You've got to live it. I mean, you really do. I mean, most people, if they get to, say, 100 years, would consider that a very respectable innings. But have you ever thought what it would look like in planetary terms? On this scale, one year is simply one trip of the Earth around the Sun, let's say till Xmas. So that 100 years is 100 orbits of the Earth around the Sun, which, when you look at it like this, eh, it doesn't seem like that much. And 100 trips of the Earth around the Sun is equal to about 10 trips of Jupiter around the Sun. Now, I personally have watched Jupiter go around the Sun three and a half times. That is, I've been an astronomer for about three and a half Jovian years. However, to be fair, each one of those trips around the Sun is 365 odd revolutions of the planet. Now, that spinning is frequently so slow that you really don't notice it until you put it into some form of time lapse. Now, I've often had a fascination with the passage of time like this and had long resolved to get a time lapse of an entire year on planet Earth. And I've been trying to do this for almost three years now. The first year, I only had one angle and it kind of sucked. The second year, the cameras really weren't up to it. And the third year mm, was better. And I actually got this really nice sequence of spring arriving over the period of about a week. And hopefully this year, I'm going to get it right with good cameras that are actually going to be stable for a whole year. And for this, I've got to say a very gracious thank you to my Patreon sponsors. So hopefully this year, one year time lapse, no screw ups. I mean, this was a little bit of my tinkering. This is a time lapse of a telescope pointing at the sun, essentially a fixed point in space. That is the telescope by almost any frame of reference is the only static object in this picture. But seeing things on different timescales like this is frequently fascinating. So, you know, here is an example of just how slow human reflexes are. Yeah, I've gone from representing years in one second to milliseconds in one second. Or this, which was an explosion of sodium potassium alloy in water, where it's filmed at 10,000 frames per second. Over the years, I've done lots of this sort of videos, only a tiny fraction of which have I ever made it onto the channel. Some of the ones I'm more proud of are, are the time lapse of a supernova in a different galaxy, which took over a week to do, or the movement of Uranus and its moons over a whole night with a telescope tracking Uranus. Condensed into a few seconds, what's impressive is not the motion of the moons, which is quite apparent, especially with a close orbiting Miranda but the dynamism of the planet moving against the background stars. You see, with the naked eye planets, they tend to be so bright that they wash out the nearby stars. Not so with a very distant and very faint Uranus. Or well, this time-lapse of an entire rotation of Jupiter, again filmed over a single night. Indeed, the beauty goes beyond the technological advances of mankind, for now you can feel in real time the pulse of the solar system. Watching the cloud tops of Jupiter hurtle around, watching Io, the most volcanic body in the solar system, and its shadow silently truck across the planetary disk, and you know that all of this is happening in merely hours. And then you look at the stars spinning, and in a flash you free your mind, and you let it all go, and you conceive the reality that the ground under your feet is what's in motion under the static stars. And there, in the mind's eye, you turn to that bright star, and you perceive in real time the rotation of the Jovian system from the terrestrial merry-go-round. A world, nay, a solar system in motion. Or well, the last transit of Venus in our lifetime. The third camera, with a 180-degree fisheye lens, kept an eye on the whole proceedings. So there, that's me, that little orange blur there. And the transit starts at about midday and ends near sunset. Incidentally, one of the most gratifying things about watching this transit was just one of those 
great moments where you actually get to feel the solar system in motion. I mean, not only do you get to see Venus track across the surface of the sun, even with my poor equipment, you get to see the evolution of the solar flares over that period of time. I mean, many times I've watched Venus crawl out from behind the sun and approach the Earth on the inside to track, but you only get to see its movement from day to day. Here you can watch this silent ballet as this mighty planet with its almost unimaginable momentum quietly sails in front of the sun. It was almost a profound moment that brings the solar system to life. I mean, really, how many times can you actually watch the solar system move? Or just simple stuff that you can see every month, like watching the shadows lengthen on the moon. In fact, it's something I've got planned for mm, sort of live blocking this year is to do the phases of Venus live through a telescope because that's one of the original observations that actually led to the conclusion of the sun-centered, the heliocentric solar system. Anyway, so it's just a bunch of other cool time lapses of various things that I've done over the years and never really quite managed to work them into a video. Some of them were just kind of pretty, like this flight over the Alps. man-made monstrosity that nonetheless looks amazing. This is Los Angeles, a scene from Mount Wilson. or the very large array, these radio telescopes in the New Mexico desert, doing their little ballet. Followed by a really quite spectacular drive into a thunderstorm in Arizona. And the night flight over cities and the such like always looks beautiful. And what the hell? Here's me putting together some flat pack furniture. Because even though life may be short, there's still something kind of funny about a man battling against flat pack furniture. <laughs> 